Hey everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Buckaroo Design, and this is my second video in my Planted Paradise series. If you're looking for ideas on how to use this awesome stamp set, make sure you uh, click the link here on YouTube, go back to my blog. I have five projects in total. This is one of our reversible stamps, which means you can stamp the image, the detailed image, and then flip it over and stamp it to get the more solid image. Um, we're gonna do that with one set of leaves, um, but you can see that really you can do all of them. Now I decided that you have several choices here, of course, for your plants, but I decided I had to pull out my filled with fun bundle. I did a series on this with the wagon and I started really thinking about the different things that could go in the wagon. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, I have seen rusty old wagons and gardens with plants growing in them. So that's what we're making. Um, you're gonna use these two dies right here to make your wagon. These two make the tire and this is the, the little hubcap. We'll put the, um, the wagon together in a minute, but I just wanted to make sure that you knew which dies I used. And then we're gonna use that sentiment right there. You make my heart bloom. Okay, let's stamp all of our leaves. Now, really, you've got so many different choices here um, to use, and I really ran the gamut <laughs> with these. Um, let's start with Mossy Meadow. Yeah, let's start with Mossy Meadow. Okay, now the only stamp we're gonna do reversible is this one. And it's funny because this one actually doesn't fit exactly right, but it does the job. It gives you kind of an um, abstract fill-in. So what you do is you clean it real good, give it a second to dry, and then you're gonna flip it around on your block. Let me bring in my grid paper here because we're gonna need to stamp off. I'm gonna stamp it and see, you can see how it's solid now. And I'm gonna stamp off on my grid paper and then I'm gonna fill in like that. So if you are not a fan of coloring, this is a great option for you. Now you can see it's not an exact match, but I think it's designed to be like that, kind of, like I said, abstract. Okay, so we did those in Old Olive. Now let's do this one. I have no idea what this one's called, but I love it. It's like a cattail. We're gonna do this one. And I put both of them on the block at the same time. We're gonna do two sets. Nope, I think we just did one set of those. You know, it doesn't matter. Just start stamping and then cut them out and then just play around and see what you like. All right, um, let's see, we're not using that one. We are using this one. We're gonna do this one in Granny Apple Green. We're gonna do that one twice. We have a lot of greens to choose from, so you can mix and match your greens um, so that they're all different. All right, last but not least, let's open Garden Green, and we're gonna stamp this one twice. I think maybe in my last video, I said this was my favorite plant, so who knows? Who knows what I'm talking about? I love all of them, they're great. Now, oh, you know what, while we have that, let's stamp our sentiment, and we're gonna do that Let's see, is it long enough on this edge? edge? I think so. We're just gonna stamp it right there on the edge and we're gonna slice it off just so that we have a strip. Now the bad news is there are no dies for this set. So get out your paper snips. I've already cut all these out so you won't have to watch me do that, but I just wanted to kind of give you some tips on cutting. Um, so I'll do, I'll do these two. Um, cut them out so that you have smaller pieces of cardstock to work with. Cut all that excess cardstock away. That will really help you get into the nooks and crannies. And then just start on the outside of the image. I like to leave what I call a little white cloud around or a little white border and go around. If you leave a white border, it's going to make the eye only see the edge of the stamp. Now you, my, you may not be able to see it, but mine is a little bit crooked there. And you really, if you're gonna put that on there, the eye isn't gonna see the white edge, it's only gonna see the image. The other tip that I have is to stay right in the middle of your blade. Don't go all the way to the tip because that's when you get kind of a, um, you know, a sharp edge. And last but not least, use your opposite hand to turn the paper instead of turning your scissors. Okay, so I've got them all cut out already. There we go. Um, let's make our wagon. This is really the fun part. We're gonna do some flicking. If you don't know me, 
<laughs> I like to flick my Stampin' Blends, but they are kind of messy when you do that. So you want to protect everything around you. All right, I mentioned that you're going to cut out these two pieces from the using the wagon die from um, Smoky Slate cardstock. And then we've got the handle and the two wheels in basic black. Now I'm going to take a small blending brush and copper clay. And I want these to look rusty and old and dirty. So run it off there on your grid paper. And then we're just gonna kind of be sporadic with it. You know, rust isn't even, it's sporadic. And it just kind of forms on the edges of things. See how I did that? Just kind of make it a little bit messy, okay? Ooh, look at that one, that was a good one. Now, normally I would be unhappy that my blending brush did that, but that boy, that does look like rust, doesn't it? And then this is kind of hard, but just set them down there on your, let's see if we can get a little hard edge there on that, that, um, that hubcap. Okay, now get your dark copper clay and you wanna use the brush end and you're just gonna flick that ink on there like that. And that's gonna give those rusty spots. Now I did like to come in and do a little more concentrated rust in some areas by doing like a dot, 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 dot. Really, I'm going for that look right there. So that's actually pretty good. And you want it to be just kind of, you know, not, not in a circle, not really in a normal shape. You just want it to be just like kind of messy. Okay. All right. Now, um, to adhere these, I like to use my uh, foam adhesive strips. You just cut little sections like that. I actually think I only need one. No, I think I will use two. They fit perfectly in there. All right, now we're gonna put that part right there, okay? And we, let's get our tires and we'll just use liquid glue. Okay, and this is when your take your pick tool comes in so nice. You can just pick those up like that, set it down. Okay, now let's give that a second to just kind of dry out and we're gonna put it on our card, but we gotta put our card together first. For sentiment, like I said, we're just gonna chop it. Make sure that that Y is in the chopping, you know, outside the chopping block and just slice it off so that you have a skinny strip. To make the, the V's on the end, I cut up the middle and then I go from corner, from each corner to that middle spot and that will create a perfect flag for you. So in the middle and then from the one corner and then from the other corner. All right, there's another die I'm using, and it's from the Everyday Details dies. I got a piece of um, pecan pie, looked like this, and I ran it through my cut and emboss machine. And look at that. Doesn't it kind of look like a marquee with lights around it? So that's how I created the frame. We're not using this, but I'm definitely saving it to use for another project. The, the designer series paper I'm using is so beautiful. It is called Nature's Sweetness, and it's from our spring catalog. It is retiring, so make sure you grab it. It's specialty paper, so it's a little bit pricier than a regular paper, but it has gold foil on it, which is awesome. We're gonna put that piece right there. And then I'm gonna get those foam adhesive strips again. I need them to be a little bit longer this time. And let's see if I can get them peeled off. We'll put them around the edge here. I, you know, tend to think about our foam adhesive strips just for shaker cards, but boy, you can use them for so much more. When you need a long, skinny dimension, these are perfect for that. All right. Now we're gonna put this on here like that. All right, you know, my designer series paper isn't straight. Let's see, I wonder if I can undo, see down here, it's just not straight. 
Can I undo it? Uh-oh, uh-oh. What do you guys think? Do you ever do this to your cards and you're like, oh no, save the paper. Okay, I think we did it, but I'm gonna add some more adhesive. So let's add a little bit more and make sure that it's straight this time. There we go, that's better. I kind of curled it up a little bit. Now we could put this on there. Okay, bring your wagon over and let's put some dimensionals on our wagon. I'm gonna get regular dimensionals this time and I'm gonna put my dimensionals kind of low because I'm gonna tuck those plants in behind there and I need to leave space for that. All right, we're gonna put them right there like that. And then I'm gonna just use liquid glue right here on the edge, kind of tuck that up in there. And where did my tires go? Here they are. Slide those up in there like that and like that. Make sure they're even. All right, now we'll just start gluing in our leaves. I'm gonna start with the back row first, the taller ones. Let's see, we'll put these, we'll kind of spread these three evenly. So one, two, three, like that. And then I'm gonna take my, I don't know what these are called, but I'm gonna call them a cattail. And I think I'm just gonna use one over here, like that, okay. Now I think maybe let's do some dimensionals on these. Okay, uh-oh, have I lost one? It looks like maybe I've lost one, but you know what? I have another. Well, whatever, we'll just make it work. All right, let's start with this guy right here. Tuck that in like that. When you use dimension dimensionals, you're really creating some dimension in your card. Uh-oh, uh-oh, our glue's not dry, so everything's like, Whoa, hold on. Let's see if we can slide that down in there without disrupting our cattails. All right, now I should have another one of those, but I do not. So we'll just do another one of these. Now it will take you a few minutes to die cut or to Cut, fuzzy cut all this. I sat in front of the TV watching the Astros game last night and cut them out in really no time at all. It's worth it, I think. All right, I've got one more. Let's stick it right there like that. And now we have a cute little, little garden arrangement of our um, plants. I would love to have an old wagon in my garden. All right, now I'm gonna put just a dot of glue on the handle here. I can get my glue to behave. And I'm gonna put the glue there and there like that. Um, our sentiment, I think this is another good time for our foam adhesive strips. And, you know, I struggled with putting the sentiment here. I didn't wanna make it too busy. So you could always put the sentiment on the inside if you felt like it was getting a little bit too busy. And now, of course, a little linen thread bow. Okay, and we'll put that on with a mini glue dot like that. Now, what about the inside? I didn't do anything on my sample, but I feel like we really should do something on the inside. So I have a piece of basic white. You've already got all of your um, stamps out. They're already on blocks. So go ahead and just, let's make an arrangement. Let me get my, my greens open across the bottom like this. And they'll overlap some and that's okay. Let's see. Do one like that. And where's our little cattails? We definitely want those. Like that. And then let's do this one here. And then what else? Oh, I have this little one that we haven't used. 
I'll do that like that. And I feel like something needs to go right there to cover my mess. All right, cool. Like a little, little garden for the inside of your card. So cute. And then you have space to write your message. All right, four by five and a fourth is this piece. Now, guys, I have a free PDF for you that has all the supplies and measurements for this card, as well as two others. I have five Planted Paradise projects for you total. So click the link here on YouTube, go back to my blog and check them out and let me know if you have questions and have fun stamping. Bye.